Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the leak code question binary search. Alright, so we're given a sorted integer array, nums of n elements and a target value and we want to write a function which uh, looks for the target value in nums. And if it does exist, we want to return its index or else we return negative 1. So if you don't know what a binary search is, I will be going through it uh, step by step. But in simple words, it's a search based algorithm. So in this case, it's going to be looking for the target value inside of nums. But one condition for it to work is that we must have a sorted array. And that makes sense. We do have a sorted array and it is in ascending order. So in order to kind of show you how this works, I'll be using the same example over here, but go through it step by step. Okay. And one more thing that I want to notice is over here, the number two does not exist. So we output negative one. All right. So let's just go to this example right over here. All right. So we have negative one, zero, three, five, nine, twelve as our array. And I remember, I think the target is nine. So the number we're looking for is nine. It does exist. So we want to return the index of that. So how a binary search works is that we have two pointers. We have one pointer, which in the beginning is going to start at the leftmost. So this is over here going to be our leftmost pointer. And I'll just call it left. And we're going to have one more pointer, which starts at the very ending. And this over here, let's just call it right. So this is going to be our right pointer and it starts at the very ending. So now what we're going to do at each step is that we're going to be going to the middle point. So this over here is at the index zero and this over here is at the index one, two, three, four, five. So that's at index five. And we want to find out what is the index at the very middle. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take our left value, sorry, our right value since right is greater than left. So right minus left, and we're going to divide this by two. And we're going to round it down since, and we're going to do integer division since we want a whole uh, integer value. Okay, and now that we do this, we want to add whatever value this is to the left. All we're doing is finding the middle, nothing much. So let's just actually apply these values over here. So in this case, it's five minus zero divided by two, which gives us 2.5. We're going to round it down to two and we're going to add zero. So two plus zero, which well is just two, right? So that's telling us the middle value is at the second index. So now we're going to go to that. So zero, one, two. So this over here is our current middle value. Now, what does this value even mean? So this is telling us that this is the midpoint and we're going to check what, where this value lies with respect to our target. Now, this is where the fact that our array is sorted comes into play. Because our array is sorted, what we're going to do is we're going to check is this value. So the middle value over here is three. Now three is less than nine. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the value that we're looking for is going to be past the middle value. And the reason we know that for a fact is because this is a sorted array in ascending order. And if we're currently at the value three, that means everything, including the middle value and to the left of it is going to be less than three. And if three is less than the target, that means we'll never find a value which is to the left of mid. So this saves us a lot of time and we won't be going through each and every single number to check if it's equal to our target value. So since this value is less than our target value, that means the number we're looking for is to the right. So in that case, what's going to happen is our left pointer is going to move to the right of our middle pointer. So let's just cross this off. So these kind of just expire out. And this over here is our new left pointer. Now what's going to happen is we're going to be looking for our new middle value. And if you want to do a look at the math of this, it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is at the third index, this is at the fifth index. So 5 minus 3 divided by 2, which is 2 divided by 2, which equals 1. And 1 plus our uh, left value. So that's 1 plus 3, which tells us our middle value is at the index 4, which is right over here. That's our middle value at index 4. And now what we're going to do each time we go to our middle value, we're going to check if our middle value is equal to our target. And it is. Our middle value is equal to our target. And in that case, very simply, we're just going to return whatever this middle value is. And I just want to show you one more uh, condition real quickly. All right. So I just went back all the way to the beginning. And now what I want to do is instead of looking for the number nine, let's look for the number zero. So let's go to zero over here. And now once we go to zero, what we're going to do it's going to be the same steps. Our first step is to find the middle value. And we already got that over here. So this is the current, the middle value in the beginning. So we go to the second index, so zero, one, two, and that has a value of three. And now if you notice, three is greater than zero. And what that's telling us is that 
we want to check the left of our area. The middle value is greater than our target. So we're never going to find an air, uh, the target to the right of it since it's in ascending order. So our answer has to be to the left of the middle value. So in that case, what's going to happen is that our right value over here is going to end up over here. So now it's going to end up to the left of our middle value. So in this case, this is our right value. Just cross that off and it's going to come back right over here. Okay, and now we do the same steps. So we're gonna, so this is that index one, uh, zero and then one. So one minus zero is one divided by two. It gives us 0 0.5 since we're rounding it down. This is actually going to end up becoming zero and we're gonna add our uh, L value here. So zero plus zero. And that's telling us that the middle value is at zero, okay? So currently our middle value is right over here. So this is also, our left value is also our middle value. So now we're just gonna continue doing the same steps. So over here, our middle value is less than our target value. So when the middle value is less than the target value, that means we wanna move and look to the right side of that middle value. So in this case, our left pointer we're gonna cross it out, and now our left pointer is gonna move one to the right of the middle value. So this is the middle value, we're gonna move one to the right, and that means our left pointer ends up over here. So the left pointer is in the same place as our right pointer. So when they're in the same place, then obviously the middle value is also gonna be the same thing. Uh, just to show you, it's gonna be one minus one, zero divided by two, which is zero plus, uh, plus this value, which is one, and that gives us index of one. So the middle value is over here currently, it's at the index one, and zero is equal to our target value, and we found our answer. So that's pretty simple, hopefully that did make sense. And now let's just go through the code and how that looks like. All right, so let's just go through this. So first we're gonna start off by defining our variable. So we're gonna have our left variable and the right variable. So the left variable starts off at zero, and the right starts at, at the rightmost index. So to do that, we're gonna get the length of nums, but when we're counting index uh, indices, we start off at the value zero. So we're gonna subtract our length by one in order to go to the last index. So after we have this, we're gonna do a while loop. So while our left value is less than right, we're gonna keep going inside of this. But that over there is actually not correct because as you saw in this case over here, the left value can also be equal to our right value. So we wanna account for that as well. So while the left value is less than or equal to our right value. Until then, we're gonna keep going inside the while loop. So now we're gonna find out what is our mid value. In, in other words, what index is the mid value at? In order to do that, we're gonna do right minus left. So right minus left, we're gonna divide it by two. So we're gonna do integer division and we're gonna add this value to our left part. So left plus that, and that is going to give us the index of whatever the middle value is at. Okay, so now that we have this, we're gonna go to that current element. So we're gonna go to it, nums, that's our area, so it was defined over here, and nums mid. So if this value is equal to our target, then in that case, we're done. In that case, we can just directly return our middle value, since we wanna return the index it's at. So we're just gonna return mid and we're done. But uh, after this, we have two conditions. What if it's less than our middle value? So let's just do that real quick. So if nums mid is less than, sorry, is less than our target value, then in that case, that means that our answer is not going to be anywhere to the left of the mid value. It's only going to be on the right hand side. So in that case, what's going to happen, our left value is now going to be at the right one to the right of our mid value. So to do that, we can just do L equals to mid plus one. And if this is not the case, and what that means is that our target is less than the current mid value that we're on. And in that case, that means the answer is gonna be on the left hand side of the mid value. So in that case, we're gonna change our right pointer to be mid minus one. And actually let's just convert this to else if. So we're gonna keep going inside of this while loop. And what if we actually never end up hitting the target? So in that case, what's gonna happen is we're gonna return negative one. And I'm doing that outside of our while loop. So that's in the case when we don't actually return anything here. That means the value does not even exist. Okay, so now let's submit this and see how that looks like. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. So hopefully the video did help. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know what you thought about the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.